are live hello hello everyone i hope that we are online if you are there just give us some waves or thumbs ups just to confirm that we are indeed live and you are you are hearing us i hope it is all working and in the meantime i will assume it is uh, just let me check I, I see that it is on YouTube. So I hope you are also there and listening to us. So hello everyone, this is .NETOS conference edition 2022. Unfortunately, still it is online because we were afraid of how things will go. And then we decided simply to make it still online. So this time this year, online version. Uh, the agenda is like that, so I will not take your time. You can go to this page and see. In general, we have three days and three talks every day, each and every day. Today, we have Rafael, Stefan, and Miquel talking all the time. It is like .NET stuff, advanced stuff, performance stuff. Not always, but at least uh, we try to make things interesting for you. So this is the agenda. And uh, the whole conference wouldn't happen if we were not having uh, sponsors. So here we have sponsor. Uh, we have a diamond sponsor, Allegro Pay, which is uh, the largest and fastest growing fintech in Central Europe. F big thanks to, to Allegro Pay for helping us to this conference to happen. If you are interested in finance, if you like to work at scale uh, this is the company that you will have opportunity to work on the big scales and in general the largest e-commerce may sound for sure interesting so if you think this is interesting and the whole company really tries to make customer awarding awarding level of support this may be challenge for you so look at them thank you allegro pay for supporting us the second diamond uh, sponsor is Demand. Uh, it is the world leading uh, hearing healthcare company. So on the other hand, if the medicine is uh, your topic, if you are interested in, in innovative technology solution and know-how related to things like helping people improve the health and hearing in particular, this is a company that you may be interested in. It is currently employing uh, over 16,000 people and has solution in over 100 countries. So this and other sounds like super nice challenge if you are finding for new challenges in your company, in your, uh, not in the company, but in your career, then you can go there and also look what they are offering. And also having this opportunity that we are here online and you are listening to us, uh, so uh, you can look also at our own page with .NETOS Academy. We are offering online courses about async, about memory, about diagnostics. All this may be, I hope, interesting for you. So here you are. You can go our products page and look around what we have there. And super special offer. And if you know us, you know that we are not so willing to give a discount so now we have it an opportunity to have a discount uh, so uh, you have this discount dot 2022 which give you 20 percent discount on any uh, course that we have there excluding c sharp expert course professional ex uh, course because it is so discounted already that it will be always almost for free but still look around there and as always share uh, share on our social media are there so you can use you can share what you are listening to we are inviting you to do that and also uh, there will be time for questions. I like hopefully if during the session at the end, maybe a few minutes, but still we are inviting you also to our Discord server where you have an opportunity to discuss all the time during the whole conference. Uh, during uh, there is a .NETOS conference dedicated channel for you. And uh, having all that, uh, let's not take more time from Rafael, which is just willing there in the backstage and keen, keen to talk uh, his talk. So let's welcome, um, let's welcome Rafael. Hello. Hello. 
You are the very first, so I took a few minutes from uh, you. Sorry for that. A great pleasure to, to, to be the first to, to kick off this uh, awesome uh, conference with a lot of cool uh, topics. I have seen that uh, from the master of the GC, there is uh, nothing else <laughs> that uh, super hard <laughs> topics. And so the I decided to, yeah, 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 absolutely. And so I decided to, to present something very nasty and I developed uh, one specific uh, thing for this conference that you will see during the demo. There is a lot of absolutely. code, uh, awesome. there is of course a, a new URL uh, for GitHub so that you can also look at the code uh, and participate uh, in, in the project if you will. And so that's awesome. it. Let's, uh, if you could share the screen, I will hide myself just not to interrupt the talk and have a nice talk, everyone. Okay, I uh, will immediately share the screen. Okay. As and always, share... when, uh, yeah. while you are setting yes. this up, mm -hmm. hello everyone from everyone, just gave from where you are because we love to listen from where you are listening to us. So just say welcome and the country and whether the weather is nice if we're from where you are now. So that would be. Yeah nice to see yes here. it's important on an online conference always for people to for the attendees to participate i mean something in the chat some question and so on i know that you will monitor the the chat so yeah. that we can uh, uh, continue this discussion either online or even after the the conversation uh, on discord so Absolutely. i will be there in order to continue the conversation so absolutely waiting for the for your screen and we can start yeah and you should see my screen now can you indeed indeed, yeah? indeed. Yeah, that's great so <laughs> i can avoid the stack overflow exception <laughs> in the video <laughs> in the video version so uh these are my slides let's see to hide this button to maximize the, the screen and here we are so Preemptive monitoring application in production. And this is a very hard topic to touch because uh, I have seen <laughs> so many times uh, problems in uh, uh, when, when you have an application in production and you, you don't really know how to grab that additional piece of information that you really need to, but there is something that you cannot do because it's in production. You cannot just recompile and redeploy every time you you see something different so we have to find a way to to stay with what we have and investigate the issue that's the main topic so i am uh, raffaele rialdi from italy you can you can <laughs> understand from my accent uh, i am a, an electronic engineer so this is uh, something unusual for a for a software guy but i spent uh, almost my entire life in, uh, in, in professionally in software and uh, in my free time uh, uh, i spent also a, a lot of time in electronics uh, with uh, very hard stuff and um, uh, i am a consultant in many industries i have to say that this gives me the opportunity to see uh, issues from different perspectives. I mean, the exact same problem in performance, let, let's say, sounds very different depending on the industry you are uh, touching and uh, on the application kind and so on. So this is a great opportunity for me to understand the um, hundreds uh, of uh, point of view on a specific topic. And I'm also a speaker and trainer. You have maybe seen me in person during one of the many conferences or online and videos on YouTube and so on. And I'm a very proud member of the MVP family since 2003, almost 20 years. It's a very, very long time. So let's go straight to the point. This session is not about telemetry. By the way, later on and a couple of uh, on today, you will see the open telemetry discussion. And this is extremely interesting. It's a topic that uh, I encourage you to follow because uh, it's a super interesting uh, topic. 
but this is not a strictly about telemetry. There are things that you can grab and understand using logs and telemetry. Of course, they are super important. But this requires the application to be instrumented. You have to put that some additional piece of code. You have to, deal, to say, OK, uh, I anticipated the potential problem here, and I added a, a, a log, log information, log warning, log error, or whatever you want inside my code. Uh, uh, because uh, I knew that in a very rare case it could happen, and uh, but very often <laughs> this doesn't happen. Unfortunately, this is not always the case. Also, you uh, can grab uh, information about the application logic, the business logic, and uh, there are certain times where you really don't have uh, su such kind of bugs. You have different kind of bugs. For example, you may notice that uh, you have, uh, let's say, five connections on, on your ASP.NET application, and you discover that the amount of memory consumed at the moment is pretty good. I mean, it's something you are expecting. Then suddenly you have 1,000 requests, and you discover that everything go uh, weird because uh, the amount of memory is not proportional. You, you expected some object to be recycled. You expected the performance uh, far better. You didn't expect uh, a lot of uh, exceptions, for, for example. And instead, you see that. And you, you, you don't know exactly how to reproduce these, those things uh, in production uh, and, um, sorry, on, on development uh, side. You maybe have a, a test scenario. You may have a lab. Uh, but it's always very difficult to reproduce exactly what happened. And this is the point of, the, of this session. So metrics uh, provide uh, really a different perspective because they are not invasive. So you can just run uh, an arbitrary .NET application. You have the process, and you just want to monitor those things, those metrics that uh, uh, Microsoft provided for you, which is very important. You have very plenty, a very huge number of uh, event sources provided by Microsoft inside the .NET that uh, can help you to understand what's happening with the CPU, with the memory, and, and so on, with the garbage collector, and so on. So this is a good uh, way, because you don't have to, run, to touch the running process. You have a lot of information also about the network. There are much more, of course, because you can monitor like uh, SQL connections and a lot of other things, and also from third parties. And of course, uh, you can also write your own custom uh, event source. And writing custom event source in .NET Core, it's so easy. I mean, it's super easy. It's like uh, uh, inheriting a class and nothing more. It's super easy. It's not like the old times of, of the ETW, where you have to write a lot of stuff, register things in Windows, and so on. Now you have even sources that are as efficient as the old ETW. They are simple to write, and they are also uh, they don't do not require uh, any installation, and they can also run on, on Linux or, or, or Windows. It's awesome. Uh, but as, even if you have those uh, uh, probes, let's say, because you receive events about the memory network and so on, you want something more. You want to monitor, for example, how many objects of this kind uh, is in my memory when I have 1,000 requests uh, per second. Or uh, uh, what is the first chance exception rate in my application? Maybe the first chance exception, you know, they are something that uh, won't crash your application. They are the second chance exception. But they are very important because they can slow down your application a lot. So if you notice that after a given uh, HTTP request per second, you start having a number of first chance exception very high, you are slowing down the process. You are getting nasty behaviors. And uh, this is why probably your application is not scaling. So uh, this is something very difficult. Of course, the low level debugging style is hard. That's the problem. So you don't want to make every time you have a little uh, uh, problem with the memory or the application is not performing exactly as you want. 
take the let's say WinDBG or LLDB and uh, start debugging with SOS, the, the, the Son of Strike uh, plugin that uh, shows you the internals of the CLR. That, that's pretty, pretty nasty. So the production challenges is that we can't touch the running processes. We don't want to put our hands on the servers, of course. You cannot go back in time and add, add more logs. And certain times you can do it, but uh, it's not even so convenient that uh, you, may, you have to repeat uh, and repeat and repeat and repeat. And you and we will end up in, in having to uh, recompile your application a, a, a large number of times before have, uh, reaching the culprit of the of the bug and then uh, also mentally healthy admins <laughs> will not allow the bugging uh, tools in production you cannot install so many things i have seen WinDVG in production and that's nasty i mean guys don't do it D don't convince <laughs> your admin to do it that that's uh, even not allowed in many companies of course and so we can uh, take a different approach uh, and uh, having something that um, is uh, uh, yes, uh, can be a bit invasive, and we will discuss this because it's very important, but there's nothing that can com compromise uh, the server. And uh, the first uh, idea that I can have in mind is say, okay, let's uh, let's start and use the tools that Microsoft is giving me, like a .NET dump, and like, like a process dump, or process explorer and dumping, or task explorer and dumping, or, or even uh, add a feature inside our application to self-dump when uh, it reaches an, uh, something that is going wrong. But self-dumping is something that uh, basically is telling, hey, I know that something is going wrong, so you had to add additional code to your application to understand what is going wrong. And this is, does not play well with the business logic, with the business application and so on, because you are wasting time in trying to understand if something is going wrong for, within the same process. So I don't suggest this kind of approach. Instead, uh, there is also the problem that dumps takes quite a while. So if you freeze the application for a while, you can disrupt a little bit uh, uh, the, the the process and the users that are using it, it depends from the scenario, of course. And um, taking the dumps at the right time is hard. As I said before, if you are developing, uh, you probably will see the, the basic scenario. But uh, what about the bugging and taking the dump when there are exactly 100, 1,500 uh, requests per second? That's hard. You, you cannot just go in Task Manager and right click and say dump. Maybe in that exact moment, the, the step has gone. I mean, it's difficult. And also, once you get the dump and you want to make a human analysis, you, are, you have to deal with the GDPR regulation because the process memory can contain the passwords, the secrets, uh, data about privacy and so on. And that's bad. So basically, uh, also, the uh, repetitive task is something that convinced me that uh, I have to do something different. If you ever played with SOS, you know that you will type for hours uh, before seeing something concrete, and uh, you have to write uh, further extensions to WinDBG or LLDB in order to make this process uh, decent. So, the challenge number one is how can I know what is the right moment uh, to catch uh, something uh, in memory that is valuable for, to, to understand the bug? And the answer is, of course, the process metrics that we have, were mentioning before. We, we don't want to use the tools that I repeat here. Is, uh, they are very valuable, so it's, they are important. But we want to use instead the diagnostic client and the event sources. The diagnostic client is a very important library that Microsoft gave us in order to make uh, our own diagnostic tools. And those tools use exactly the diagnostic client. So you can investigate the memory. You can receive even counters from the GC about allocation, collection, and so on. 
and then you can also take uh, the amount of the working set you can have the amount of cpu that is consumed in a given amount of time and then also the first chance exception that i was mentioning before that they are so important to understand why an application is slowing down and also the amount of requests per second on http but on the network, there are plenty of many others. So you, you, you can really play with them and understand what is what is better for your own scenario. So it's not we are not talking about making a, a generic tool. We are talking about making a tool that is specific to your scenario. And also a custom event counters, which is extremely important because you can trigger an application that you say, OK, I know that if this is happening, it means that something has gone very wrong, even if the application doesn't crash, by the way. And uh, this is this means this first step is uh, using the, uh, the .NET client, uh, the, the diagnostic client. And um, you can use uh, to make uh, dumps, uh, to retrieve trace events. Uh, you can use for uh, a lot of things. And you will see that if you want to use it, the library is very easy to use because you create just a client with the process ID that you want to monitor. It's not invasive. It, it won't no, slow down your application. So it's very safe. You build up uh, one or more providers that at the same time will monitor specific information with the given level of information. So you, you have an entire, I mean, uh, chapter on, uh, on uh, the documentation online that uh shows you um, the, a huge amount of, of traces some of them they are not even documented you have to you but uh, since we have the sources of the uh, of the dot net runtime you can go there and looking up the event source you discover a lot of counters that are extremely valuable and and, and also you may want to sample the those data every let's say one second okay and even at one second is very good i mean it's not uh uh, slowing down too much the, the application is, is really neat uh, and, uh, and not, uh, not, not too hard. Then you build a session with the client that takes in account the providers, uh, one or more, of course, that you want to monitor. And finally, you uh, build a communication channel, the event pipe, event source that uh, is provided uh, with, a, with a stream from the session. And this guy will uh, decode, let's say, these in terms of uh, events and you can then uh, i mean uh, receive uh, all the events that uh, we will see in a moment by, by the way given that we will start and we, we say okay source process let's go this is a synchronous call so you have to offload it to another thread by the way challenge number two now that we have something uh in, in, uh, and we can understand the, what is going on in this application. What can we do? So uh, we don't want just to know that there are a huge amount of uh, first chance exception. I want to see what are the number of uh, threads that are there. I want to see uh, the memory that is used, the, the custom object, uh, my, the, the, the objects coming from a given namespace, because I know that they may uh, create uh, problems. And so this is where you use another Microsoft library called the CLRMD. And you may know uh, there are many friends of us uh, that uh, already talked a lot of time about this, this library, like Christophe, like uh, other guys uh, that, that uh, you may know on the internet, you will find a lot of material uh, for that. And um, this is basically the power of the SOS plugin, but just using C Sharp. It, there is, uh, it's, uh, I mean, more comfortable as a, as a developer to use uh, the library than the SOS commands de per se. And also, if you instead uh, use both the library and my wrapper that I, I will talk about a bit, you, I, you will basically have the power to query the memory with link which is astonishing good because you can make queries on uh, the fields, on the, on the objects, and then say, uh, let me see the routes and, and so on. So with a minimum amount of knowledge about how the runtime works, you really have everything you want at your fingertips. 
at this point, you may want not to use the dump because, because we said that it's pretty slow, but a snapshot. A snapshot is a kind of uh, dump, but uh, much faster. It takes about 150 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds, depends on the memory, of course. It's really, really fast. But at the moment, the CLRMD library make it fast only on Windows because uh, there is no primitive in the kernel to make snapshot on Linux, but they are working and uh, we are all waiting for that on something that uh, will fork the process on Linux and then dump it. This means having a, a lightning fast way to extract the memory from a process without stopping it because we are in production. We don't want the people to stop working or being hang just because we are trying to understand what's going wrong. And we can investigate several use cases. This is super important. So size of the graph for each object in memory, the root path and the, with the reconstructed path, because uh, I mean, you don't have from an object the path to the root. We have to reconstruct that because uh, the, the runtime doesn't have the opposite path. You can start from the root and walk uh, the graph on the opposite way. And then also the sides of the graph for static fields. This is a, a very nice query that I wrote because this is the primary reason for managed leaks because you maybe have a static dictionary in a field and you forgot to, to clean up the object and you will end up in having gigabytes of memory hold up from static fields that is in your code. And it's extremely simple to see that. And also duplicate strings, which is uh, one of the sources of uh, an excessive, excessive use of memory, or a thread and manage stacks, or uh, even uh, objects grouped by the assembly load context. You may know that the assembly load context is a wonderful addition to .NET Core and time that allows you to unload the assemblies. So instead of the application domain in .NET Core, we have assembly load context where you can create one, you can put your things there, and then you can unload. But it's not like the application domain that uh, they are uh, brutally uh, destroyed. You have to be collaborative. So if you have just a single reference that point there, you have a, basically a leak because you, are, you want to unload, but they stare there because there is uh, an object reference that keep the, this load context alive. And then, of course, a lot of our other queries that you can write for, on your own. So that there is a lot of space here. So we have a demo. And uh, let me explain before what is going on. We have the test web app on the right, which is a, a, a bugged application, of course. And uh, we have to simulate the number of clients that are pushing down requests on this application. In order to do that, I, I created a demo stress application, which is able to create a, a very high number of concurrent requests and really con concurrent requests at the same time to this application. This is in order to explore, to, to try and to make a sort of lab you know, so that we can understand what's going on. I will not be able to show you everything because in 45 minutes explaining all this stuff is too much. But you can also uh, clone the repository and, and try it for yourself. So uh, after that, we uh, run side by side on the same PC, on the same hardware, a diagnostic application, which uh, uh, connects uh, to uh, the, the, the test application that is leaking, that is well, bad performing, and there's the diagnostic client and the CLRMD that we just talked about. And this is an important uh, duo. I mean, two different libraries, they were not meant to work exactly together. I have put that together in order to create a, a tool which can be expanded by you in order to create uh, uh, your own customized diagnostic application, which is this one. And then, of course, uh, you have a kind of uh, front end. This is, we will see what, what is the front end. And you can take uh, this snapshot, which basically slice the memory of the test application so that we can analyze and understand what is going on. 
okay? So we have a kind of uh, free the uh, runtime, controller, services, everything in, in the object that you want to explore. And uh, we run the analysis at this point. We don't care anymore about the running application. The, the, the clients will continue to use the application. And if the application is not crashed, of course, you can uh, see them running as it, uh, nothing happened. OK, so it's, everything is clean. At this point, uh, we uh, have for this demo, uh, I created a WPF application that we will see in a moment, that can you uh, uh, investigate this snapshot. So we will work on this snapshot while the application, is, the, 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 the runtime application is running. And you don't have to uh, be afraid in stopping uh, the, the clients. Uh, in the upper, mass, in the high part, you will see the event sources in real time for this uh, application. And then meanwhile, we will get a, a snapshot with using the button. And finally, we will use this uh, uh, combo box with a lot of uh, queries that I created uh, uh, for this purpose. And you will see, we will see the, the objects uh, below with the ability of filtering and so on. But this is not uh, the, the complete story because I created a, a similar diagnostic application, but the web part. So the second one, is the diagnostic application that you have seen as a, the WPF application before is running as an ASP.NET web application. This really means that you can deploy this one together with the bugged application in production and forget it. Of course, I am serving this on HTTP without authentication. That's up to you. I, I didn't implement the authentication. Uh, but you, you have to in production, otherwise you can just expose to localhost and, and it's fine. And then a, a SPA a application created with React uh, that use SignalR to receive the event sources. And so you see uh, here this, uh, this wonderful uh, uh, navigation bar. And uh, below, I didn't have the time to complete all the displays. So uh, currently I make the queries and I show in a JSON tree, in a nice presented JSON tree, the results from the query. This is just a way to uh, demonstrate that, yes, you can uh, make it remote. So this can really be on, on the cloud. This can be really on whatever server you want. You don't have to physically put the WPF application on the server. And, and that's it. So we will see in a, in a second what, what I mean. So we will start from uh, the test of, uh, application. So with .NET Run, we want to uh, run uh, this application in order to start testing it. Of course, you will see everything going pretty slow because of I am streaming on from my PC. So at the same time, I run also the stress test web application. And uh, also, I start running this one, that is the diagnostic server, even if uh, with WPF, this is not used. OK. So you can see that I also created a custom assembly load cost contest, uh, context with that uh, add-on. This uh, is basically an add-on that can eventually be unloaded, but uh, it, there is some uh, outstanding uh, reference that is keeping it from being unloaded. And so it, it won't work. But I want to you to show the, 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 the I mean, the, I, I want you to show the, the query to understand that. And then I run the WPF application, which is currently the most complete between the two. And so uh, you see here monitoring a process. You can uh, look for the test web app, which is this PID. I click OK, and you see that I subscribed the event sources here. So I have the CPU consumption, the last allocation, and so on. At this moment, if I put this on this side and I begin stressing the application, OK, the first execution, OK, you know it's slower just because we have um, the problem of, of the JIT, you know, right? But if you look at the HTTP request per second, and I will push my button, or even if I continue, 
continue action, you will see a huge amount of, of requests per seconds going on. Okay. And since I am streaming, of course, the machine is pretty overloaded right now. Okay. The second thing that I want to know at least is six, which is uh, I want to leak a graph. And I want to reclaim it because I can also run GC collect and free leaks in order to, to put everything okay. This is just a test application. So at this moment, I have a leaky application and maybe I understood using those values that something is going wrong. And by the way, if I want, I can also run exception on uh, exceptions. And you will see here the exception throwing a bad exception okay if you want to clear this value you can just click here and that's okay at this moment i snapshot the process and of course the first time this takes a while you see 500 milliseconds but the second time you see a number that is far better and this goes down when you are not streaming in a conference of course and uh, and now what we can do if you are familiar with SOS, you may know that there is a dump heap stat in order to see what's the condition of the heap. Okay. And these queries will run much faster on your PC than on mine during the, the conference. And you, you can see here that there is a lot of uh, things in memory, of course. And maybe I want to filter out with the test. Okay. And you see that uh, I can easily come up with a restricted set of, uh, uh, of, uh, of things that I have uh, here in my application. For example, uh, well, test pages shared and blah, blah, blah. And this is the number of objects. If you go with uh, um, SOS and you try to make a similar thing, you will, I mean, spend a lot of time in there. And if I click an, an object here, it uh, will try to understand uh, what are the uh, roots that are uh, connected to this object, which in this case is uh, uh, there is uh, nothing. But I will go on and show you the second one. Then we will come back uh, to, uh, to the query in a moment. So the second one is get static field with the graph and sides. This means that basically on the left, you will see uh, the list of all the fields that uh, are statics uh, inside the application. And then I walk all the object graph in order to see how long is, uh, how big is the graph. And you see that uh, with the S registrations, I have 5,000, uh, so five megs, an instance is five megs again, and uh, then you, we have the underscore roots, which is something that I created and is one of the uh, way I create a, a leak. Uh, so you see the, the graph root here. And also, I also have a, a leaky dictionary. So just with the single query, I identified that, that there are some suspects in terms of field that are keeping a lot of memory <laughs> inside uh, my application. This could be already sufficient to understand what's going wrong, by the way, okay? And uh, if I click on, uh, let's say, the roots, uh, of course, I, I can see a lot of things and uh, I, I, can, I, I can go on. Uh, get duplicate strings. This is another interesting. So there are certain things, uh, certain strings, strings that has been created several times, and uh, there are probably keys, secret keys. This is why you don't want to create a, a user interface on the on, on this guy on the on, on this guy. And uh, you have that uh, rough HTTP client is repeated one thousand times, and. and many other i mean you are every time a request received from the client uh, is stored in a, on a different uh, uh, object and this is the reason why we still have a duplicated uh, string and then the strings by sides so what are the largest strings that i have in uh, in my um, in my application and you can see probably this is the path or the environment uh, and and so on so you can see also uh, certain uh, the, this is the stack uh, of, from a try catch of course 
uh, and and so on. I mean, there also can be objects that have have been uh, already released. Uh, by the way, you you can understand that from the dump, but I mean that's additional uh, work to do. And then the modules and uh, all the modules that have been loaded uh, in the application. You can also see the thread stacks, and the thread stack seems very important because you can also start from the manager thread id one the one with main and you see what's happening here okay this is important when you see a very high cpu consumption and the cpu consumption is saying that you are using a lot of threads probably and this means that investigating what is executing you may find that i mean there are uh, things that can be offloaded to a single thread and put in a queue instead of executing multiple times the same thing and and so on so i mean there are a, a number of things you will see that certain times here there is nothing and this means that they are currently in the in the native so the clrmd is not able to give you the native word but just the managed one this is the reason why certain times here you don't see anything and there is a an issue open in order to improve this experience on the CLRMD uh, repository, by the way. Then the roots. So when you want to see all the roots that may be inside the stack, uh, inside in an application domain, there are static fields and whatever else. This is the complete list, which is, by the way, the exact same comments that you obtain with SOS. Objects by size. Okay, what is the largest object uh, in uh, in my in my application? And we have a lot of uh, byte array of uh, 64k. We have also this one that is very large. And uh, if I go here, for example, I want to know what is uh, this object. And uh, if I go, for example, let me let me go to non-system object by sites so that I can only see mines. I don't want to see the object for for, for the um, I mean for the runtime and so on. I want to see just my objects. And you will see also this grandchild, for example. And uh, with that, as soon as I select it you will see that uh, a, a research uh, goes on. And what is happening here is basically that I try to walk back, walk back the path that is going from this object to the, its root. But we said that at runtime only know the object uh, going from the root uh, to the object with the exact op opposite path. So there is a lot of work to do. And uh, when there are many possible paths in uh, in uh, in this uh, in this walk it may takes a while and so i offloaded it in a, in a separate thread and you will see a percentage on the status bar going on for example here we have that this path is telling you that this grandchild is inside an array which is um, by the way the field uh, inside the list, uh, because I don't use the array, I use the list, but the list inside has an array of the same type, which is uh, in, in the child object, uh, which again is in the list of the child, uh, which is in the graph root, which is also in, in the graph root array, which finally is in the memory pressure service, which is uh, the source, uh, of a service in ASP.NET that I created in order to create memory pressure, okay? And this is ultimately, ultimately uh, hold in a static field, which is the root. And you can see a list of graph roots, okay? So uh, all this backward research is done by the object that you can watch in, in, in the in the diagnostics, by the way, and it's extremely interesting because can let you walk uh, very easily. This was easy because there are just uh, three paths. But if you go to other objects, you may be, I don't know exactly which one can be the most uh, difficult, but um, there are many that, uh, I mean, it can be like thousand paths and it can be extremely annoying to search uh, for that. For this reason, when you have a very large number, uh, 
uh, you will end up in uh, uh, building a better uh, navigation. So if you go to, let's say, object by side, um, we will try to identify something here, for example. Ah, this is a feature that I didn't talk yet. Uh, every time you double click an object, you end up in looking exactly in the memory of that object so that if, a, if it is a string, you will see a Unicode strings, okay? But uh, if it is another object, you may find something interesting in there. So this is another cool feature that uh, I, I created for, for this purpose. And um, if you go to the EP endpoint, let's see. Right. So you see there are 20, 225 reference. Do you want to continue? Yes. And by the way, even if you don't want to wait for the percentage that you have seen here uh, to continue, if you change the selection, the operation, uh, so, so for example, this one, if you change the selection, the operation stops and uh, is concealed. So you are free to go and say yes, whatever you want. Uh, you will not lose control over the, um, I mean, the, over the, uh, over, over the tool. And finally, the get object grouped by a alloc locator. Of course, uh, I, I don't list here the default allocator because it's the default is where normally all the code runs. But here you have a special allocator, which is called myload context. And what's inside that? And what are the objects inside that? By the way, there is the leaky add-on. And uh, there are 1,000 uh, and uh, one, no, 1 million, uh, 120 uh, blah, blah, blah references. I will not continue. <laughs> it's better not to do that. It, that's too much. But you can investigate this by code. I mean, the, the important thing is that you can uh, start investigating something because, hey, I found the culprit. I want to understand well, if there is a path that points to an object that, whose namespace is one of the mimes and not the system or Microsoft or whatever else, this is the important thing. There is a, a lot of space to customize the, those things. So here you have a lot of things to do. And uh, I want to show you uh, the other thing. So I have a surprise for you because you can see here I have uh, a Raspberry Pi, okay? So I moved everything there, okay? I compiled an ARM with the Linux ARM for the Raspberry Pi, and uh, I have an amazing, uh, uh, I already ran it because I knew that I had uh, not, not much uh, time for it. I have the test of application running, I have the stressed application running on SSH on the Raspberry, and I have also the diagnostic server. This is the application that uh, replaces, let's, let's say, the WPF application, and I can control it by uh, this uh, React application. So it's a, in a very primitive state, by the way. I have to click to select, you see the test web application, I can attach it, okay? I am monitoring and you will see that there is something going wrong, going on. And if you recognize that something is going wrong, you can take a snapshot. And on Linux, you can see that is writing a full dump to file, blah, blah, blah. So this is going to, to take some time. Well, it takes some time also because it's a Raspberry Pi, of course, right? And by the way, you may have seen two Raspberry Pis uh, with the camera. And the Raspberry Pi on the camera, the small one is a Raspberry Pi 2.0, which is an extremely uh, low power device with not a very uh, a fair amount of memory. While the other one that I am running on now is a Raspberry Pi 4 with a lot of gigs of, uh, of memory. And so I can start uh, running application, uh, running things here. So let's start from this one. And uh, when I run the application, you will see I didn't create the UI yet, but you can see my load context, which is exactly the same thing that we uh, were uh, observing on, on Windows a few minutes ago. And I can run uh, the non-system object uh, uh, 
things. And you will see, I, I just created an HTTP request to the web, app, web APIs, and you can see here all the information that we have and, and so on. So I find this extremely amazing and demonstrate that, you, yes, you can uh, run all this stuff uh, remotely. Uh, I created a, a lot of code. There is a, a huge amount of code for these applications, of course. Uh, I hope you, you will appreciate that because you can also see uh, that uh, I had to write a fair amount uh, of uh, converters. So there are JSON converters for all the principal uh, types of, of uh, CLRMD and mines that uh, hold up the information about the memory, the thread, and so on. And this way I can transport the results to uh, the React application on the SPI inside the, your uh, the, the browser and investigate uh, everything. So this is it. I mean, uh, I find it very, very exciting stuff. Uh, no more source comments, of course, uh, at this point. You don't need it anymore. And uh, uh, just to uh, give you a glimpse of other things that uh, I already did, but I, I will not have present here because it, it takes too much. Uh, the diagnostic client uh, also implements a, a reverse protocol uh, communication that uh, let you understand the issues at bootstrap time. This means that uh, basically the application, when start, uh, wait for the uh, diagnostic client to connect uh, and then starts uh, producing events. This is important because you may want to monitor issues at the very beginning when the application is going on. And then this gives you the opportunity to have, for example, the complete list of assemblies being loaded. And also you can build a, easily a replacement for the famous Fusion Log Viewer that uh, uh, is well known to people working and uh, worked on the, in the past with the framework. And these are the pointers that I want to give you the CLR, CLR, um, CLRMD library from Microsoft. Uh, in the same repository, there is also these utilities which I contributed into. And also the uh, diagnostic client tools, uh, which uh, are the, like uh, the notepad counters, uh, the diagnostic client and many others. And my demo code, which is complete of everything. Of course, the web application is not complete. There are still issues. I am working on it. If you want to contribute, please make a pull request. If you want to open issues, OK, we can discuss them, uh, the, the other things there. So I will more, be more than glad that make it growing so that uh, we, we can maybe spend another time in another occasion and, and talk about the new stuff that has been implemented. Um, summing, up, sum, summing up, I want to say automating uh, the diagnostic is so important. Uh, for a hardware guy like me, I would say that is equivalent to the watchdog in microcontrollers. So you monitor your app, you see an event source shooting out something that is useful to start an investigation, you take a snapshot, you just begin querying the memory and everything you have captured with the simple link queries, and you finally customize the query for your application, and uh, in the worst case, you can decide even to uh, recycle your application so, so you can restart the application if everything goes wrong so there is always a value in, in that said that thank you very much for uh, your attention i hope you enjoyed the session uh, sorry to i had to run a bit but you know there are a lot of things uh, to say and uh, if you have other um, uh, if you're interested in the .NET debugger, how it works, uh, how, how to build one and so on, let me know because I did it, but uh, I guess that there is not so many people interested in it. And uh, that's it. Uh, I, mean, <laughs> I, I wouldn't be so sure. A... I wouldn't be so sure. <laughs> I don't know, but I want to know if someone is, is interested because, uh, you know, uh, that's something that maybe is uh, an idea for future sessions. Absolutely. Uh, uh, I, yeah. If you will find someone, um, probably you will find them on our Discord server. <laughs> okay. <laughs> one, one, of the, one of the places. That's Sorry cool. that I will be just 
you know, killing the session a, a little shortly, but we are just four minutes before the next talk. So yeah, thank sorry, you very sorry, much. Sorry uh, no, I, I took your time because I needed to introduce the conference <laughs> itself. So thank you very much, Rafael, for giving us You're this welcome. awesome talk, awesome tool. And I hope you will find also some contributors because the idea is really, really uh, useful, first of all. So uh, I hope this will just develop. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you, Conrad. Thank you to the other speakers. Uh, uh, watch the conference and see you on Discord. Exactly. And maybe on some conferences. Of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you.